In this body horror game, a speaking fish has the gift of choice to decide its fate of whether going up or down. A limited yet future-altering choice in which the fish can become part of a higher being, a hive mind organism or simply an ingredient to a dish. In its journey, the fish can share its opinion with other fish who similarly found themselves in this large contraption, an opinion which could make them reconsider their own decision to whether go up or down, which essentially means the main character fish is responsible for them ending up as chopped up food or joining a higher being. At first, it might seem like a simple choice with the outcome unknown, but the closer and closer the fish gets to the final deciding minute where it needs to go up or down, the more it doubts itself straying from its steadfast opinion which it once held. The story of the game in a way resonates with real life and real people, on how the external environment and others can impact one's decision in life, no matter how convinced they are. There are times where one person is so convincing and sure about what they believe, which makes others doubt themselves, even fully knowing what the other individual believes is complete falsehood. The story begins with the fish protagonist falling through a chute into a large covered warehouse type of place where he can flop around to move. As he flops around, he comes across a larger fish who shares its wisdom with the protagonist. It explains that at the end of the path, the fish like all the others need to make a decision to whether go up or down and the protagonist shouldn't flatter itself with its decision as anybody has to make the choice and in reality nobody knows what's waiting for them behind each choice. The large fish explains its decision doesn't matter as at the end of it, the protagonist has to make the choice. This reveals the first fish knows better that there's no clear answer to this mystery and the protagonist should keep its choice to the end as the path acts as an allegory to the world on how everyone tries to change one's mind and enforce their own beliefs and ideas but at the end of it, none really matters. Despite that, it's important to remember one has to face the consequences of their actions and decisions as there are different outcomes. Moving on, the protagonist meets another hyper fish who is erratically flopping around. The fish explains with great conviction that the only way is up and that is the true path and it never doubted itself. It goes on saying how the direction things go just as flowing water and flesh, which all follow the gravity, are all wrong as anyone smart knows things go up. When the protagonist says it's going up in response to the fish, it gets its further validation, even believing the direction of gravity is wrong. But on the other hand, if the protagonist says that it's going down, the confident fish pities the protagonist and wonders if it's going to hurt or kill it, not straying from its already formed decision yet becoming angry, which in a way shows that maybe it is not too sure about its own decision. This in a way portrays how some people might seem delusional in the real world who believe in their delusion even more when they get external validation from others. Right in front of this erratically flopping and excited fish who believes in his choice strongly, the protagonist finds another larger fish trapped in six-pack ranks, who despite seeming like a clumsy fish sounds profound and well articulated. Eloquently, it explains that the flopping fish is lost like many others, who are doomed with the decision that they have made. It further explains that the protagonist shouldn't be foiled by their decision, as this larger fish has the oiliest of all brains and knows the best, as it spends days thinking and contemplating, coming up with the best solutions in life. It further explains it always has made the right decisions, being very convincing and sure, seemingly talking based on experience and proper scientific calculations rather than having blind beliefs like the opposite fish. It then continues to explain how it came to the calculation that down is the right direction, however it stops itself, saying its ways are too complex for a simple fish like the protagonist to understand, not even caring what direction the protagonist wants to go. This, alongside some misspellings, reveal that this fish in fact is pretentious and despite being so articulate, 
It has its own flaws and as the first fish said, no matter how oily one fish's brain is, no one really knows which direction to go and that the protagonist should make its own decision. This again is a direct allegory that no matter how intelligent some people are and how well educated they might be, it doesn't mean that they are a know-it-all and the ones who pretend to be and intend to show off are in fact the ones in the wrong. This fish tries to bust the protagonist around and order him that it knows the best, in a way trying to enforce the idea that down is actually the correct way and anyone thinking otherwise is blind with foolish beliefs. This causes the protagonist to doubt itself and its decision as it started with believing up is the right way, but talking to different fish, they use their own reasoning and manipulate its decision, making it difficult to know what the right way is now. The protagonist then flops away from these contradicting duo and reaches a cowering fish in the corner, unsure of what to do, explaining how its family has gone up and its best friend has gone down, being torn between choosing friends or family. There are some untold details in the information, however, which are hinted at when speaking about them. The fish clearly seems neglected and disrespected, as the friend seems to be using it as the punching bag or the butt of each joke, while the family is distant emotionally. It goes on saying how it feels up as the right choice, but the contradicting decision of its friend and family has caused it to question itself. It goes on asking the protagonist which way is the correct way, which both result in the fish having conflicting responses. If the protagonist says up is the right way, the fish feels validated and that it would never question its family again, and that it wouldn't be even sure if it will always be friends with the friend and that they had their disagreements before. On the other hand, if the protagonist mentions down is the right way, the fish goes on saying how it feels stupid that it didn't follow the friend and the friend would surely call him stupid and belittle it when it follows them. At the very end, the fish asks the protagonist if it's going to the place that it advised the insecure fish to go, to which if the protagonist says yes, the fish gets its validation and feels freedom and the relief of certainty being happy. But if the protagonist mentions that it's going to the other way, the fish becomes severely distraught, saying how its stomach hurts and runs away while panicking. This also reveals how the influence of others can make one lose any sense of themselves and lose their own confidence. This fish unfortunately lost all self-intuition and not having a say of its own revealed how others could manipulate and control it. The protagonist then moves on, falling through a veiny and meaty hole which seems like intestines reaching another fish staring at another engulfed in some sort of a clear gooey substance. This fish seems deluded thinking it is blessed to be inside such a creature, which is the strange warehouse where all the fish are thrown into. The fish explains that it has become chosen to go down, hence why it should continue its journey going down but not before getting engulfed in such substance. This fish clearly seems to have accepted its fate, believing it's going to a better place, while on the other hand, on another part of the strange place, the protagonist meets another fish which had tried to leave the place, not choosing to go up or down, exploring other choices that are not given. This fish in effort to leave thought the place that they are in is a creature like a large fish which has swallowed them. When it thinks gears for a door are gills, trying to squeeze through them to go out, which instead got it stuck, making the door malfunction. Unfortunately, the protagonist to go through has to press a red button, which makes the gears turn, ultimately causing the death of the stuck fish. This shows how sometimes we are limited with the choices that we are given and there is no escape, which is what this fish had experienced. Going deeper and deeper into this place, more fleshy things show up with what seems to be fish fat and meat being out on display. Further in this mechanical yet fleshy place, lined with functioning organs, bones, cartilages and metallic machinery, the protagonist comes across a fish which has a parasite having eaten its tongue, speaking on its behalf. The parasite blesses the protagonist with a musical which is both entertaining and disgusting, which is a short, well-deserved respite from all the horror that it just went through and experienced. Further down, it comes across a top filled with dead fish piled on top of each other, 
with more being thrown on top of the pile from a chute above them. As the fish continues on, it encounters a linear path blocked by one fish, which seems to be the last judge every fish meets. It asks the protagonist where it has decided to go. Whatever choice the protagonist mentions, the judge fish says that it doesn't matter and an unworthy critter like the protagonist has been blessed to have a choice to begin with. And what's really important is not the outcome of the choice, but the choice itself and the conviction. The fish continues questioning the protagonist if it was sure along the way, if it was true to its truth and helped others with the truth, or if it was at any time swayed by others' opinions and decisions. Therefore, it's not the destination that is important, but the journey itself. It is the way we live and how certain we are and the decisions we make, not the end. Essentially, the journey itself shows the results and the outcomes along the way. We saw how some fish were engulfed in fear and discomfort due to uncertainty and how some desperately wanted validation. Yet the others who were steadfast in their beliefs cared little to the external world and believed in their own beliefs, regardless to how absurd they might have been. There are a total of two endings in the game. Just before reaching the two doors leading up or down, the protagonist meets another fish who used to be sure about where it wanted to go, but reaching the doors, it shows how uncertain it is and how different fish's choices have affected it. It then explains that it saw where each fish went and counted the number of fish going up or down, giving the protagonist the option to know or just trust its guts. Asking the fish to reveal the numbers, it explains 100 199 went up and 474 fish went down, meaning more chose to go down opposite to what the protagonist had decided. Being scared and uncertain, it asks the protagonist where to go to get a final reassurance which makes it feel at ease, no matter what the protagonist says. To return the favor, it mentions that it will go first and shout out to the protagonist the first thing that it sees, so maybe the protagonist can make its choice better. Approaching the gates, the fish screams out that it's soft before its voice dampens and goes fully silent. In here, the protagonist chooses to go up, where a sequence of poetic sentences explain how thousands or millions go through the same problems one might think that they are alone in. Then eventually, the fate of the protagonist is revealed. It turns out the gooey substances all over the place and the birthing creatures in tiny holes were part of an amalgamation of many fish, which created a hive mind organism which would be powerful with vast knowledge yet being useless, information which wouldn't help them anyhow or be used in any way. Every individual in this hive is burdened with immense knowledge of each other and the world around them, but no purpose or direction or self. Therefore, this might seem like a good ending, but it's far from that, as here, the protagonist is trapped being good for nothing and no purpose, just existing and taking the burden of this knowledge. On the other hand, if the protagonist chooses to go down, a far worse fate awaits it. This direction acts as a conveyor belt preparing the fish to be served on a plate to hungry customers, revealing that this place was nothing but a large state-of-the-art kitchen which kept the fish fresh up until the last minute serving them to the customers. Therefore, despite being killed and served as food, the fish at least don't have to spend an eternity trapped as a hive mind god, fed for no purpose, just rotting from inside and giving birth constantly. So effectively, the long journey the fish took, the pain and misery, the uncertainty and talks were all for nothing as at the end, the fish were fit for no purpose but to be served as food. As one fish said, the outcome is not important but the journey itself and the conviction, a sense of individuality. This can be said in life as the outcome at times can be disappointing and not that important after all, something out of our control. But the experience we gain and the journey itself and the decision that we are given are important, as it's the journey that helps one form an individuality. And that is it for this video folks, what are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, it's been your host Dar, until the next video, have a fantastic day.